Thanks for watching. This is the first video that I'm doing in vibrations and hopefully you find this helpful. Now, this is going to be quite simple. Uh, free vibration versus force vibration and just talking about some of the differences. Uh, later on, hoping to do some more advanced uh, examples with continuous systems and all sorts of tricky stuff. So if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe because I'd love to bring you guys some more videos later on. All right free vibration versus forced vibration. Now, hopefully there's a little bit of a inkling as to the differences there. Um, we've still got vibration. So we'll start off with free vibration. Free vibration is essentially when the, the mass spring system, which is a single degree of freedom system. Um, hopefully you know a little bit about degrees of freedom. Um, if you don't, the single degree of freedom system just means we're assuming that we only have up and down motion in this case. Um, two degree of freedom system would be if we can go up and down, left and right, and then 3D into the page back, then rotation and so on. And two, typically you can have a six degree of freedom system. So we just assume single degree of freedom, SDF. And what happens is free vibration occurs when we excite the mass and then let it vibrate itself. So you could formally, formally describe free vibration as free vibration occurs when the system is allowed to oscillate in absence of external forces. So you can see in this system over here, we have F of T up here, which is our forcing function. So over on this diagram, we've, we don't have any forcing, we don't have any external forces. You know, there's gravity, but we don't, we don't include that in our analysis for good reasons, um, because it will cancel out. So we don't have any external forces acting on this system, which means we are in free vibration. So if we were to, grab this mass and then pull it up a little bit and then let it go, what would happen is it would oscillate up and down, up and down. Um, and that's when it's in free vibration. So you might think, oh, well, you've got to move it a little bit. You've got to apply force to get it to start vibrating. And that's correct. So we can apply an impulse at time is equal to zero. And then after that, we're in free vibration. So what happens when we flick this mass or we apply an impulse to it? I've just drawn a little quick sketch of what would happen to the system if we flicked it or we applied an impulse. And we would go up with initial displacement and then we would go down and start oscillating. Now you can see as time goes on, our peaks are reducing in amplitude. And this here, this distance from here to here, this is our amplitude, um, the, the, the peak. This is peak to peak, this distance here, which is often peak to peak, often denoted like that. But this is our amplitude here. So you can see as the peaks, as time goes on, the peaks reduce in amplitude. And that means that our displacement is decreasing. So you can think of it as you're holding a slinky and you drop a slinky. I'm sure we've all played with slinkies. And as it drops, it drops the furthest the first time and then it starts to go up and down and then it eventually comes to rest. Well, this is exactly what's happening here. It's like a slinky. So in a nutshell, that's free vibration. The system oscillating with no external forces. So hopefully it's clear well, it's hopefully a little intuitive of what forced vibration is going to be. We have what's called a forcing function up here. Now, this is typically harmonic and a harmonic forcing function is important because it really, it's really probably fairly different to something that um, most people are used to. You're probably used to a force on a block 
that's on a flat surface of say 50 newtons. Okay, that's cool, that's a constant force. Well, it's important to know that our forcing function over here, it is a function of time. So we, we do not have a constant force. And as time goes on, that affects the magnitude of our force being applied. This is all in newtons, by the way, this is a force. Okay, so f of t would look something like this. Now, hopefully you're all familiar with this graph. Um, I'm assuming you are. So what happens is as time goes on, you can see that our force applied varies greatly. So for example, if you were to take this point here, let's grab a different color. If you were to take this point here, where f of t crosses the axis, which is going to be pi seconds, if you take this point here, f of t is equal to zero newtons. And so when we apply that back up to our example, there's zero newtons being applied to the mass. Now this means that we have no forces and theoretically at that very instant of time, we satisfy the conditions for free vibration, which is no external forces. So this is a very complicated example of uh, what happens to this system compared to free vibration. So there's a lot more going on in force vibration. So as time goes on, we can never reach this, this graph that is for free vibration because we constantly have a force applying forces at different magnitudes. So if we were to draw a diagram for the displacement, it would track a similar behavior as the forcing graph because the, the mass is never allowed to go to rest. It's never allowed to reduce its amplitude because there's always a force applying of different magnitudes. So hopefully that helps answer some of the differences between the free vibration and forced vibration. Uh, the key takeaways are is free vibration only occurs when there's no external forces acting on the system. And force vibration is when there is an external force acting on the system. The key differences are, is that in free vibration, the mass will be allowed to go to rest. And in force vibration, the mass will never be allowed to go to rest because there's always a force being applied to it. So thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to do some calculus on a free vibration system and we're going to derive the characteristic equation from sum of forces because we have an ordinary differential equation, Newton's second law. Don't worry, it doesn't sound as bad as what it is. Tune in for the next video and I'll see you there.